YouTube, this is Robot GZ here for another, um, actually, uh, this is a, uh, special video I wanted to do, um, this is going to be, uh, a subject about video games, the positives and the negatives, like, Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I wanted to do this, um, because I just want, I just wanted to see how many people would reply to this, um, topic. So, um, I will read off, and you guys can just comment on whatever yeah, needs to be detailed and stuff like that. Now note, um, some of the stuff is, um, not right or shouldn't be in there, so, yeah. Okay, so, positives and negative effects of video games. It's believe video games is good or bad for you. It can be both. Video games are looked down upon by parents as time wasters, and worse, some education experts think that these games crunk their brain. True fact. Let me tell you. Violent video games are rarely blamed by the media, and some experts as the reason why some youth become violent or commit extreme antisocial behavior. Example GTA. Um, before I go on any, well, uh, any more longer, the site is up here. Or, um, hmm. I'll copy and then put in the description. There. there. So, continuing. But many scientists and psychologists find that video games can actually have many benefits. The main one being making kids smart, indeed. Me, uh, video games may actually teach kids high level thinking skills that they will need in the future. Very true. Video games change your brain. Yes. According to U University of Wisconsin psychologist C. Sean Green, hmm, he's from Wisconsin, nice. Uh, playing video games change the brain's physical structure the same way as do learning to read, playing the piano, or navigating using a map. Much like exercise can build the muscle. The powerful combination of concentration and rewarding surges of neurotransmitters like dopamine strength and neural circuits can build the brain. Below are the good and bad effects of video games. According to researchers and child experts. Excuse me. Alright. I don't mind if this video is on, I don't care. Um, positive effects of video games. When your child plays video games, it gives his brain a real workout. In many video games, the skills required when involve abstract and high level thinking. Sometimes that's true. These skills are not even taught at school, yes. Some of the mental skills trained by video games include one, right, following instructions, problem solving and logic, um, problem solving being zero. Sometimes math, and sometimes strategy, yes. Hand eye coordination, fine monitor, and spiral skills. In two games, the character may be running and shooting at the same time. This requires a real world player to keep track of the position of the character, where he or she is heading, their speed, where their gun is aiming. If the gun fire is hitting the enemy and so on, all these factors need to be taken into account 
and then the player must then coordinate the brain's interpretation and reaction with the movement in their hands and fingertips. This process requires a great deal of eye-hand coordination and visual spatial ability to be successful. Research also suggests that people can learn iconic spatial and visual attention skills from video games. There have been even studies with adults showing that experience with video games is related to better surgical skills. Um, I haven't seen it yet, but I don't know if it's true. Also, a reason given by experts as to why fire pilots of today are more skillful is that the gen this generation pilots are being weaned on video games. Yeah, um, for example, Mario Kart or Star Fox is a simulator where um, it makes you feel like you're driving a car or you're driving a plane and stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, resource management and logistics uh, the player learn to manage resources that are limited and decide the best use of resources the same way as in real life. The skill is honed in strategy games such as uh, SimCity, Age of Empires, and Railroad Tycoon, and uh, sometimes Minecraft, and sometimes Animal Crossing. Multitasking, yes. Sim simultaneous tracking of many shifting variables and managing multiple objectives. Indeed. Uh, in strategy games, for instance, while developing a city, an un unexpected surprise like an enemy might emerge. This forces the player to be flexible and quickly change tactics. Uh, for example, was it Roll 1? Because sometimes you don't know what the enemy is going to do. Uh, yep. Alright, so quick thinking, making fast analysis and decisions. Yes. Uh, sometimes the player does this almost every second of the game, giving the brain a real workout. According to researchers at the University of Rochester, led by Daphne Bevealer, sorry if I scabbered your name there, a cognitive scientist, Game simulating stressful events such as those found in battle or action games could be a training tool for the real world situations. The study suggests that playing action video games primes the brain to make quick decisions. Video games can be used to train soldiers and surgeons, according to the study. Hmm. Strategy anticipation. Stephen Johnson, author of Everything Bad is Good for You, how today's popular culture is actually making us smarter, calls this telescoping. Gamers must deal with immediate problems while keeping their long-term long goals on their horizon. Developing reading and math skills. Yes, this is true. Uh, young gamers force themselves to read to get instructions for follow storing lines of games and get information from the game text. Also using math skills is important to win in many games that involve quantitative analysis like managing resources. Perseverance in higher levels of the game, players usually fail the first time around, but they keep on trying until they succeed and move on to the next level. Yep. Pattern recognition. Games have internal logic in them, and players figure it out by recognizing patterns. It's the main skills, inductive reasoning, and hypothesis testing. 
James Paul G., professor of the education at U the University of Wisconsin, Madison, ooh, another guy from Wisconsin, uh, say says that playing a video game is similar to working through a science problem. Sometimes that's true. Like students in a laboratory, governors must come up with a hypothesis. For example, players in some games constantly try out a combination of weapons and powers to use to defeat an enemy. If one does not work, they change the hypothesis and try the next one. Video games are goal-driven experiences, says G, which are fundamental to learn. There. Mapping. Gamers use in-game maps or brand maps on their heads to navigate around virtual wor worlds. You. Memory and improved ability to rapidly and accurately recognize visual information. A study from Beth Israel Medical Center in New York found a direct link between skill at video gaming and skill at keyhole or lap or surgery. Uh, recent adjustments taking risk. Winning in any game involves a player's courage to take risks. Most games do not reward players who play si safely. How to respond to challenges, how to respond to frustrations, how to explore and rethink goals, teamwork and co co cooperation when played with others. Many games are played online and involve cooperation with other online players in order to win, thus giving your communication skills um, advancement or leveling up. Simulation uh, and real world skills. The most well known simulations are flight simulators, which attempt to mimic the reality of flying a plane. All of the controls, including airspeed, wind angles, altimeter, and so on, are displayed for the player, as well as visual representation of the world and are updated in real time. Video games introduce your kids to computer technology and the online world. You should recognize that we are now living in a high tech sophisticated world. Video games make your kid adapt and be comfortable with the concepts of computing. This is particularly important for girls who typically are not as interested in high technology as much as boys. This is true. Video games allow you and your kid to play together and, get, and can be a good bonding and activity. Some games are attractive to kids as well as adults, and they, uh, and they could be something that they share in common. When your child knows more than you, he can teach you how to play, and this allows you to understand your child's skills and talents. This is actually true. Video games make learning fun. Indeed they do. Your kid likes to uh, likes games because of the colors, the animation, the eye candy, as well as the interactivity and the challenge and the rewards of winning. The best way to learn is when the learner is having fun at the same time. That's why video games are natural teachers. Hmm. Okay. Having fun gives your kid motivation to keep on practicing, which is the only way to learn skills. Video games can make your kid creative. Yes. Lots of imagination. A study by the Michigan State University's Children and Technology Project uh, found a relation between video game playing and greater creativity, Real regardless of gender, race or type of video game played. 
In contrast, use of cell phones, the internet, and computers other than video games was unrelated to creativity the study found. Video games can improve your kids' decision-making speed. People who played action-based video and computer games made decisions 25% faster than others without sacrificing accuracy, according to a study from the University of Rochester. Other studies suggest that most expert gamers can make the choices and act on them up to six times a second, four times faster than most people. Uh, very interesting. And can pay attention to more than six things at once without getting confused, compared to only four by the average person. Holy cow! Surprisingly, the violent action games that often worry parents both had the strongest beneficial effect on the brain. According to cognitive neuroscientist Daphne Bevelier, who studies the effect of action games at Switzerland's University of Geneva and the University of Rochester in New York. Video games increase your kid's self-confidence and self-esteem as he masters games. In many games, the level levels of difficulty are adjustable. As a beginner, your kid begins at the easy level and by constant practicing and slowly building skills, he becomes confident in handling more difficult challenges. Since the cost of failure is lower, he does not fear making mistakes. He takes more risk and explores more. Your kid can transfer this attitude to real life. That he could. Games that involve multiple players encourage your child to work cooperatively to achieve his goals. Your kid learns to listen to the ideals of others, formally plans with other kids, and distribute tasks based on skills. Some online games are even played internationally, and this can introduce your kid to players of di different nationalities and cultures. This fosters friendships among different people. Video games that require your kid to be active, such as Dance Dance Revolution and Nintendo Wii Boxing, give your kid a good workout. Also, Wii Fit. When playing these active games for 10 minutes, your kid spends energy equal to or, or exceeding that produced by spending the same amount of time on a 3 miles on an hour treadmill walk. Hmm. Kids are not necessarily drawn to video games because of their violence. The attraction lies in their being awarded by awesome displays of explosions, fireworks, and yes, blood spattering. Also, violent games have the most emotional appeal for kids, but these factors are only secondary to what kids actually enjoy in, in these games. The opportunity to develop and master skills have, and have the freedom to make choices in the game universe. Violent video games may act as real a release of pent up aggression and frustration of your kid. When your kid vents his frustration and anger in his game, this diffuses his stress. Games can provide a positive aggression outlet the same way as football and other violent sports. Playing video games is safer than having your teeth do drugs, alcohol, and street racing in the real world. This is a true fact. I know, because I don't want smoke. Sometimes I drink alcohol, but meh. Uh, now on to the negative effects of video games. Boo. Alright, before I do that, take a drink. Mm. 
Most of the bad effects of video games are blamed on the violence that they contain. Yes. Children who play more violent games are more likely to increase aggressive thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and decrease social helping according to a scientific study. Anderson and Bushman, 2001. The, the effect of video game violence in kids is worsened by the video game's interactive nature. In many games, kids are rewarded for being more violent. The act of violence is done repeatedly. The child is in control of the violence and experiences the violence in his own eyes, killing, kicking, stabbing, and shooting. The act, this act of participation, repetition, and reward are effective tools for learning behavior. Indeed, many studies seem to to indicate that violent video games may re be related to aggressive behavior, such as Anderson and Dill 2000, Gentile, Gentile Lynch and Walsh 2004. However, the evidence is not consistent, and this issue is far from so. Many experts, including Henry Jenkins of Massachusetts Institute of Technology have noted that there is a decreased rate of juvenile crime which concedes with the popular games such as Death Race, Mortal Kombat, Doom, and Grand Theft Auto. He concludes that teenage players are able to leave the emotional effects of the game behind when the game is over. Indeed, the, there are cases of teenagers who commit violent crimes who also spend great amount of time playing video games, such as those involved in Columbine and Newport cases. It appears that there will always be violent people, and it just so happens that many of them also enjoy playing video, violent video games. Sometimes that's true. Too much video game playing makes your kids socially isolated, yes, yes. Also, he may spend less time in other activities such as doing homework, reading, sports, interacting, and interacting with family or, f or friends. Some video games teach kids wrong values, violent behavior, vengeance, and, and aggression are rewarded. Negotiating and other non-violent solutions are often not options. Women are often portrayed as weaker creatures that are help helpless or sexually provocative. Hmm. Games can confuse reality and fantasy. This is sadly true. Because, yeah. Uh, I don't want to get in too much into it. Uh. Academic achievement may be negatively related to overall time spent playing video games. Studies have shown that the more time a kid spends playing video games, the poorer his in its is his performance in school. Anderson Dill, blah, blah blah blah. Yeah, I already know that. A study by Argo C University's Minnesota School on professional psychology found that video game addicts argue a lot with their teachers, fight a lot with their friends, and score lower grades than others who play video games less often. Other studies show that many game players routinely skip their homework to play games, and many students admitted that their video game habits are often responsible for poor grades poor school grades. Yeah, that's true. Video games may also have bad effects on some children's health, including obesity, video induced seizures, and post uh, and postural muscular and skeletal disorders such as tendinitis. 
Donatius nerve compression carpal tunnel syndrome. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, when playing it online, your kid can pick up bad language and behavior from other people and make your kid vulnerable to online dangers. Yes, example being Call of, uh, Call of Duty Online or Modern Warfare. So, I saw you by the uh, my, Minneapolis based National Institute for me, and the family suggests that video games can be addictive for kids. And that the kids' addiction to video games increases their depression and anxiety levels. Addicted kids also exhibit social phobias. Not surprisingly, kids addicted to video games see their school performance suffer. We already established this. Kids spending too much time playing video games may exhibit impulsive behavior and have attention problems. This is according to a new study published in the February 2012 issue of the Journal of Psychology and Popular Media Culture. For the study, attention problems were defined as difficulty engaging in or sustained behavior to reach a goal. Alright, now we got recommendations for video games. Let's see what this is all about. Alright, uh, monitor, monitor video game play the same way you need to monitor television and our media. Yeah, yeah. Be a loving and attentive parent who disciplines your children well, but don't do it too hard. Yeah. Uh, an aggressive child is more a product of dysfunctional parenting than anything else, including violent games and TV. According to Los Angeles-based psych psychotherapists, wait, what? Robert Butterworth, really? Butterworth, VHD dysfunctional parenting, children with little guilt and accessibility Firearms with little parental supervision can create violent children. Most tr uh, children who commit violent crime show an early combination of personality and family factors that include having trouble getting along with playmates in preschool, Barworth says. By second or third grade, they are doing poorly in school and have few friends. By the age of 10, they're picking fights and getting labeled by their peers as social outcasts. What's more, they typically come from families where parents are poor at this point because they are indifferent, neglectful to cause or they use harsh physical punishment with little love. Although playing video games can be a learning experience, give your kid a variety of entertaining things to learn from, <laughs> so your kid will not be addicted to just one thing. Be sure to make him read books, play sports, and interact with other kids, and watch good TV. Everything should be taken in moderation. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children not spend more than one hour one to two hours per day in front of all electronic screens including TV, DVDs, video, video games, handheld console, or computers. Have, uh, yeah. This means 7 to 14 hours per week total. That's a lot. Limit the amount of time they can play and use the video game ratings to limit the content of the games have ch children who do better in school and also get into fewer, fewer fights. The uh, game range today is E from Mature. Um, there is a new rating which is E plus 10, um, but that's it. So, Alright, and then monitor the effect of video games on your child. 
Observe his behavior. If, if it appears that he is becoming more aggressive with his siblings or friends during the period that he is playing by video game, stop him from playing the games. If he becomes interested in history after playing historical games, not knowing of any, uh, then the game is beneficial to him or her. What to look for in choosing a video game? Okay. Decide what is acceptable in your home and if you think video games are not acceptable. Explain to your kid the reason why it be, might be bad for him. Uh, let's see here. Bad language. Sexual content. Violence. Blood. Uh, uh, other stuff. Check the ratings of the game before you buy it or while your kids play it. Check it. Check its rating, which is indicated in the box. Note the title and the cover picture. If they have themes of sex or violence, then the, these scenes are in the game. If possible, be familiar with the game or read its reviews on the on the internet. AKA YouTube. Sometimes the bad part of the game is hidden in the higher levels. Do not neglect your uh, supervising your kid as a parent. <sighs> Consider your child's maturity level to determine which games are suitable for him. Chronal Chronological age is not necessarily a measure of maturity. Pickings that require the player to come up with strategies and making decisions in a game environment that is more complex than punching, stealing, and killing. Example GTA. Look for games involving multiple players to encourage group play. Example Mario Party or Mario Kart Wii. According to Los Angeles based psychotherapist Robert Butterworth, can't trust him, I tell you. VHD, you should evaluate the shows and games not just in terms of violence or obscenity, but in terms of the mental engagement that they require. Boys need to slay dragons. And play games with action figures and of cowboys and Indians. That is true. Uh, they need to be in a fantasy uh, where they are conquering heroes. Suppressing this may have long-term effects that may not be good. So uh, that is it. Uh, please comment on what you think, um, if you have some other things to add to that, um, I will copy the link in the description, uh, other than that, this is RobotGG, sign off, y'all. Yeah.